When you become part of the care team for a woman in her pregnancy, it is common for her to report to you about her regularly scheduled medical visits. This may happen conversationally, and having a sense of what she is doing at certain points in pregnancy can help to build your relationship with her as a trusted clinician. Furthermore, and very importantly, it's important for you to know when to expect certain standard tests and the various conditions considered risk factors by the team as a whole. This table lays out standard medical surveillance for a woman during her pregnancy. Her first visit is not likely to occur until the middle or later end of her first trimester, as there frequently is a delay of a few to several weeks from the time she performs a positive home pregnancy test until this first medical visit. At the first visit, you see that a complete history and physical examination are both performed. It is usually at this first visit that she hears her baby's heartbeat for the first time, a moment that is both surreal and magical for many. At this and at each subsequent visit, blood pressure, weight, fundal height, which is a fetal growth measurement derived from the distance between the top of the uterus and the top of the pubic symphysis, and fetal heart rate and position are all observed. A little fun fact, the fundal height is measured in centimeters and typically corresponds to gestational age. For example, if a woman is 18 weeks pregnant, her fundal height measurements are expected to be around 18 centimeters. Several laboratory tests are performed throughout pregnancy, most of these conducted only on the first visit or conditionally conducted as needed at later points in pregnancy. The timing of the glucose tolerance test is a good one to have in mind, as this is the primary method for initial gestational diabetes screening for women not known to have glucose intolerance earlier in their pregnancy. She typically will be asked to drink a small amount of a sweet liquid, often described as tasting like flat cola, and then her plasma blood glucose level is measured one hour later. If this falls above a predetermined level, then the test is repeated using twice as much of a glucose load in the drink, so be 100 grams versus the earlier 50 grams. The tests you see here are not performed in every woman all the time, nor are they likely to affect your plan of care or interventions in physical therapy. However, they have been included to assure a complete picture for you of the typical components of prenatal medical care. This and the following three slides outline medical conditions or factors that constitute elevated risk during pregnancy according to conventional obstetric practice. OBG reflects that their care continues to be managed by their obstetrician gynecologist. Where you see MFM, this is an indicator of increased need for medical surveillance and that in an ideal circumstance, they will be working with a maternal and fetal medicine specialist through the remainder of their pregnancy. Keep in mind that some of these conditions may be pre-existing and stable or pre-existing and then become less controlled when exposed to the stress test of pregnancy. Additionally, some of these conditions may emerge for the first time during pregnancy. This psychosocial screening is frequently used by medical professionals to help identify women who are in high-risk situations with regard to mental health, domestic violence, and other factors that could adversely affect their health and that of the fetus. We can discuss in the course, but this tool is one also available to you as a physical therapy professional to incorporate as you see fit. You will need to familiarize yourself with your state's requirements for mandatory reporting of findings. For example, in Massachusetts, physical therapists do not follow mandatory reporting, so if this screening revealed domestic violence, we could discuss this with the patient, but could not report it to the authorities without her permission.